Okay, Candace Nicholas Littman. What if I mess that up after I just got it right? That'd be so embarrassing. <laughs> you got it. Right. So I always like to start our interviews off with some laughs because you're talking to a stranger and it's like, at least we can laugh before we get into your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> so first, before we get into Blind Spotting Season 2, and congratulations again with Janelle. Everyone's loving it. Um, I just want to know who you are as a person first. No acting, no career. I just want to know who you are as a as a black woman in this world. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> that's layered. <laughs> right. I'm like, how much time we got, Mike? As a black woman in this world. Um, oh yeah, as a black woman in this world, I am someone who is extremely unapologetic in who I am. Yes, Jesus, I am someone who is um, very passionate. I have a lot of energy and joy. I've literally been this way since I was a little kid. <laughs> um, I am someone who's very aware of my purpose and what I'm called to do on this earth. And I am someone who genuinely wants to just make a difference. I want to have my art change the world. <laughs> I, I love that. So we're gonna go, we're, two questions are coming out of that one, right? First, <laughs> when did you know that arts, the art, was going to be your calling? And then when did you know it was going to be about storytelling and transformation? Mm, I love that question. <laughs> um, so fun fact, I always wanted to be a lawyer. Like I thought I was going to change the world one court case at a time. And <laughs> You're going to be a living pope or um, Annalise Keaton. <laughs> well, Annalise Keaton, listen, you know, mother lover, I love you, Miss Viola. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but then I took seventh grade drama Mrs. Clark, Sam Brandon Middle School in Sacramento, A. Hey, shout out Sac Town. Um, and I did a monologue, Michael. And I promise you, when I was on that stage, like the feedback I got from my peers, the, the way that I felt, I was like, oh no, God, I'm gonna change the world through my art. Like you've created me to be an artist. Like this is what I'm meant to do. This is why I have all this, you know, the way that I am, I'm like, oh, it started clicking and making sense for me. So that was kind of like the start of it was definitely seventh grade drama class. Um, and then, uh, what was the second part of your question? <laughs> See, I love that. Now we go, look, that's okay. I remember, I got it. I got it in the notes. I got it in the middle brain. I got it in the mental. So when it came to after you you learned that, you found that part, when did you know you wanted your art to be transformative, that you wanted to take me to another level of understanding my existence, my spirituality? Yes. And then you said, yes, about the storytelling. Yes. I would really have to give um, a big kudos to that part of my journey, a realization to my pastor, Dr. Hosea Collins, Calvary Baptist Church, Hawthorne, California. Yes. <laughs> um, but no, I would really have to give him the credit for that because he was the one who revealed to me, you know, that my story, although it's not unique, needs to be shared. And it's the reason that it's not unique is the reason why I need to share it. Um, for four years, I was in development of my one woman show, A Rose Called Candace, which is like a 60 minute storytelling experience of um, my life. And it was through there that I really, really discovered that all that shame and guilt and embarrassment that I was carrying from my upbringing, I was like, oh no, that is the very thing that God is going to use to bless his people. Like I, once I understood purpose and once I understood that our stories, our testimonies, the things that we go through, it's not for us. It is genuinely meant to be shared. I found so much freedom. And then I really discovered what my purpose is, you know, and storytelling. I love like sharing stories. That is the thing that can connect us. That's the thing that unifies people. That's the thing that allows you to see um, relatability, you know, and, and to understand like, dang, this person also went through that, but you will never know it, you know, through their joy or through whatever you're seeing on social media which is another reason why I'm always so transparent with my journey. You know, I, I'm very unashamed because I genuinely came from nothing. Like the impossible. You made possible. Yes, Jesus. <laughs> she said, tell your neighbor, right? Because if you do it for you, yes. <laughs> if you did it for you, he'll do it for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I, I, I love that, you know, and then you're in this industry, right? Earlier, you said you are unapologetic. How have you been able to say unapologetic and navigate an industry sometimes that wants you to not, not per se be unapologetic, but not sometimes push the fold or say no to certain things where it's like, you should be, you should say yes more than you should say no. And you should take rather than demand more respect. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a big part of that is, again, me realizing what my purpose is. Um, oftentimes, people conform or they they become a carbon copy because they don't know who they are and you don't know why you're put on this earth. So when you don't know and you're searching, you try to latch on to what you think is suppo you're supposed to be or you're supposed to be doing. But because I understand that all the things that I used to hate about myself growing up, all the things that I used to get teased for were the very things that God put in me that sets me apart for a reason. And I always tell people that the uniqueness, that thing that makes you different, that you're so like, oh, people tease me for this. I hate this part of myself. That is the very thing that God is going to use for you to bless other people. So it's like once I came to that realization, like, wait a minute, Candace. Just think about all the things that people would always tease you about or try to dim your light or try to make you feel badly about it. Like, oh, I see God. That's the very thing that you're using. It's intentional, you know? So I'm like, instead of me like trying to change that about myself, I embrace it. It is empowering because I'm like, I understand that I am rare, you know? And I'm gonna use my rarity hopefully to inspire other people to just be authentically yourself. And it's hard to do that in the culture and world that we live in. Oh, definitely. I love that. And one last question before we get into blind spot. I want to get into Janelle, everything, right? Yes. What message you want to have to young black women, young black girls all around the world? The biggest message I want to share is that you are beautiful and you are valued and you are enough everything you are made in God's image. So everything about you is enough. You don't have to follow the trends. You don't have to compromise yourself. You do not have to conform to society or the world around you. And I know it's hard. Trust me, I still struggle with it every day. Like I understand, you know, my energy is a lot. I understand that people are like, is she really this positive all the time? I am. Amen. <laughs> and also with that though, I'm also again, very transparent. I'm still human. I have my, I go through depression. I've had suicidal thoughts. I've literally had days but it's about making the choice like I make the choice every day to be like okay Candace you can either focus on this negative stuff and then it's just going to grow bigger right or you can focus on God's promise you can remember your purpose and you can just focus on being positive so something that I want to say to especially black women we have unfortunately we are under this horrible disease called colorism that has deeply impacted our culture and our community and and also the competitive thing. Like it, it, it's a thing with women in general, unfortunately, you know, we live in patriarchy, Michael, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but it's, but really it's within living in this, in patriarchy that unfortunately women have been brought up to compete with each other, as opposed to if we really unified with one another, if understanding that my light skin sister and my dark skin sister and my brown skin sister, that we are all equally beautiful, Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, how powerful we can be and have genuine sisterhood. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. No, I definitely love that. Look at me. You took me to church. You took me somewhere, huh? She went <laughs> Yala, Deepak Chopra. You took me all those places, right? Manifesting. But so that's also too, Michael, why I love my spoken word poem, Dear Black Girl. Like I wrote that specifically for my sisters, you know, and, and shout out to Good Trouble and Miss Joanna Johnson, the producer of Good Trouble, who discovered that I do poetry. And she was the one that was like, hey, can you write a poem for Malika's episode, Malika played by Zaria Dale. And she said, just something about women and black women. I said, I got you, Miss Joanna. <laughs> and, then, you know, and I'm forever grateful to her for that experience because my poem, Dear Black Girl, literally, made such an impact, you know, with so many people across the world. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. But it's literally, again, me just sharing my story of what it's like as a dark skinned sister, as a chocolate woman growing up in the society where colorism is just. Ugh. 
Exactly. No, that's amazing. Thank you for that. You know, and now I want to like, you know, talking about going into something after we talk about colorism and all these things, going into blind spotting, right? So yeah. what was it like when this role came across your email and you, did you instantly go, oh, Janelle's me? Because I mean, she's unapologetic like you. She's loyal. I mean, did you, was it one of those roles where you're like, Hollywood, did you really just write one for me? Like, did you I would have never thought you would have just wrote this black girl this, this role. Like, thank you. I appreciate it. No, literally, Michael, that's genuinely what it was. When I saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, God. Like this, Janelle feels like me. Like the, the, the talk, you know, you know, I'm from SAC. The show is based in Oakland. And us up north, we have a certain way that we naturally talk, you know? So it wasn't something where I had to put on anything. It was just, I'm like, oh, this is me. Like I was, you know what I mean? Like this is women that I grew up with. This is what I grew around. This is how we talk, you know? Now I don't cuss as much as Janelle, praise God. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there's just like literally, and I just remember being like, God, I, I believe that this is mine. Now your will be done, you know, but I, I am <laughs> manifest because I really believed it. And then when I saw the movie Blind Spotting, oh my gosh, I... Like David Diggs and Raphael Casal, they are so freaking talented. And the movie Blind Spotting, Blind Spotting was so amazing. I just loved everything about it. And I was like, as an artist, I'm really big on the message. Like, why am I, what is this art saying? Like, why am I part of this project? Like, it's important to me. And the message behind Blind Spotting, it's just like, God, I felt like this role was ordained, you know? It took me 10 years, 10 years to finally book my series regular role. And I don't think that it was by accident that I happened to book a show that deals with heightened verse and spoken word poetry, you know, that deals with um, dance and all these uh, artistic elements that me coming from theater, I'm like, this is like theater on screen. Like, it's just amazing. <laughs> That's the perfect picture. <laughs> yeah. So when I saw it, man, Michael, I wrote down on a piece of paper, Candace Nicholas Littman set to stars, Janelle and blind spotting. I hung it on. I still have it. Like, I have it framed now. Okay. But I hung it on my wall. And I kept looking at that thing. And even through the weeks that I was going through the audition process, even when it was looking like, oh, they might go some, uh, you know, go another way. I never let go of that. And I'm like, God, I, I just, I believe it in my spirit that I'm meant to play Janelle. So I'm gonna just keep on believing it, Father God. <laughs> and look what happened. And look what happened. I love that. Besides your belief, which is the most important part, what do you feel like you did when you auditioned, when you, when you, when you made that tape, or if you had to do it in person, or when you had even the callbacks, what do you feel you did to Janelle that made them go, she is Janelle? Honestly, I I really, like I said, I was just kind of being myself aside from the cussing, right? But <laughs> like, it's just, like I said, up North, we just have a certain way that we naturally talk, you know? It's just a certain swag that we naturally have up North. So it's just like, that's why I said, when I read this, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is how we talk, you know? Like this is how we are up North. So I just, I mean, I just, Something that I um, say, uh, like with my active time when we're talking or if I'm doing coachings and stuff with the babies, that I always tell people, oftentimes as us as actors, we kind of get into this mode of when we get an audition, we're like, oh, let me do it how I think casting wants me to do it, as opposed to no, let me do it how I perceive it. Like, this is the way that I am taking on the character. And and then submit it that way. And if it if it's meant to be, they're like, oh, that's what we was looking for. Then praise God. If not, something else is out there, you know. So for me, I I don't know. I, I'm just very big on doing grounded work of, of being as authentic as possible. I don't like um, performative, you know. Like I don't. I'm not acting. I really want to be, you know. And so that's what I was doing. I was just being. Just me and you, me and you. Look, it's like me. You can get you in the door. Look, that's the testimony, right? It's yes, testimony. yes. You are like the church says. Yes, yes. <laughs> so now we're here for season two, but I would like to go back to season one. What did season one mean for you with this series regular role? You know, where do you feel you found your groove? Like, what was it that when you were going through, you're like, hey, you know what? I'm finally episode four, or like when I'm looking back at it, I could see where it was like. I'm here now. Oh, um, 
because I'm always so nervous naturally. Like I was nervous before this interview, Michael. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I care so much. So like my hands be sweating and everything. So I'm just, I'm so passionate. Um, I, I don't take for granted the blessings or the, the position that I'm in, you know, so I care so much. So it's like, I get really nervous. And in terms of finding the groove, I think once I really have to give, you know, the kudos to Raphael and David, like they really created a space on set where it was, you know, it felt like family, if you will, you know, they created a space where they were very open to questions. Like, and I, listen, I am the queen of questions. Okay. I'm a big researcher. I probably was driving them crazy. So when Janelle was in Bali, how this, you know, like I was like asking everything, but they were just so open and receptive. You know, they created such a collaborative workspace. So it really helped me to be like, okay, Candace, you can breathe a little bit. Like you're like you're in a safe space. You know, you're you're also in a space with other actors who this may be their first time and they're also nervous. And it's just like having all that same common ground with the people around me, it just helped me to just be like, oh, okay, you got this, you can do this. We all in here together. Nice. I love that. Okay, perfect. Now let's get to season two. So you've already you you solidified Janelle, right? You got it. You yeah. got everything back. They didn't recast or anything. Janelle is Janelle. Praise right? God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. What do you do? Because it because be, oh. you never know. You can sit here like, dang, Janelle was different. They were like, right. like, they were like hey, um, Viv was a uh... <laughs> that's a little different. Okay, I'll be wait a minute. <laughs> So with season two, first I would love to, what are, what should we be looking forward to when it comes to season two in, 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 in the entirety? And then with Janelle, you can be looking forward to like, literally if people were like season one was crazy, oh, you need to multiply it times like 20 for season two. Like it's literally going to be just so much more chaos. There's going to be much more fantasy. There's going to be more laughter, more drama. It, it's just more of the Bay A, you know, it's just, it's, we're just giving you more of everything. So I'm really excited for everyone to see that. And more so with Janelle, um, what I'm excited about, because it's interesting, because in season one, Janelle was like super guarded and mysterious. Like the whole season, everybody was like, what is going on with her? And we didn't find out until the season finale, you know, that she was freaking married in Bali and ha became a stepmom. Like she had this whole other life that she not only kept secret from her best friend, Ashley, but she also kept it from her mama, her brother, Colin. Like she kept it away from her home, you know? And then now to be back in Oakland, she, we open up with season two. She's still very much guarded and mysterious. And you're just like, what is going on with her? But the great thing is, you don't got to wait to the season finale this time. To find out what's going on. So I'm just really excited. There's like one episode in particular that we really see Janelle's arc and we really get more insight into what her life was like in Bali. I love that. Perfect. <laughs> I want to be conscious of her time. We have about six minutes left. Yeah, okay. six minutes left, right? And so one, what are some things that about Janelle, even though you feel like really related to her, right? What are some things about her that you really get like irritated with sometimes? You're just like, I wish Janelle would stop doing that. Stop thinking that way. Stop, stop reacting. Respond. Girl, sit down. Breathe. That is a great question. Uh, I, I would have to say, oh, that's a good question, Michael. What is something... Something I would say, and it's interesting because Janelle and I, we parallel in so many ways because I'm currently going through, I'm in the season of doing this myself. But with Janelle, I would have to say is really finding that balance of how much you're showing up for other people and how much you're actually showing up for yourself. You know, I think that her being so guarded and having that wall up was a real testament to how much she was still trying to protect other people. You know, even in the season finale, Ashley played by Jasmine Seifus Jones. Um, Ashley, you know, she was having doubts and stuff with trying to marry Miles and that whole situation. And I find it interesting that in that moment is when she decided to finally reveal her truth. It was in that moment that she decided to share her testimony, if you will, but it wasn't for herself. It was still a selfless act because in that moment of sharing what her experience was, it was to encourage Ashley to go through with what she was struggling with, you know? So I think that Janelle, you know, she needs to kind of 
step back a little bit and just be like, you know what? Everybody got their stuff going on <laughs> and I can't be a savior to everybody, you know, and let me, cause she's trying to find herself. You know, she, she was gone for five years and now she abruptly came back to Oakland. She's in this space of like, okay, what's my career going to be now? You know, what love life do I have? You know, um, how am I going to heal from this? And it's like, oh my goodness, Miles is in jail. Asha need help with baby boy. My mama out here dating all these dudes. What's going on? My brother Colin, I don't know where he at. You know, it's just, there's so much happening. And it's like, Janelle, you can't control everything. Yeah. So breathe, sis, relax, you know? And it's something I'm trying to tell myself, Candace, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Last question before we go. And I want to make sure the audience and viewers and readers all get a message out of this. You said it took you 10 years. It took a decade to manifest this, to get to where you are. What is something you would, you would have, you, if you could tell your younger self 10 years ago, and for any actor that's waiting for that 10 year mark for that big moment, what's something you wish you would have known or somebody would have told you that would have kept you encouraged during those times that it got dark? Uh, I wish I would have because I literally just got this revelation like literally just a couple years ago. So I wish I would have really understood. My pastor says a lot. He was like, you know what, baby girl, the reason why you don't got it yet is because you don't got it yet. And I was like, what? And he was like, you have to see it before you see it. So oftentimes, if we're believing God for something, we're manifesting something, life still happens, right? So if you're looking around and you're like, hey man, which is true, you know, I'm living in my car right now. Like, God, are you sure that I'm really called to greatness? Like, am I, I'm seeing myself on the, on the billboards. I'm seeing myself, you know, on the deadline post, starring, blah, 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 and all this stuff. But right now I'm sleeping in my car. Right now my stomach is growling because I don't have enough money to, for food, you know? Like, really, God? You know, and it, but it's in those moments you still have to see what it is that you're believing God for or whatever it is that he promised over your life. So for example, there had to be moments throughout my homelessness where I was like, oh no, I'm not in my car right now. I'm in my trailer on set. Or if I go and I got a couple of dollars, I go to the taco truck to get some food. I'm like, oh, I'm at Crafty right now. I'm on set. Like I had to see it. Even when I finally did move into the studio apartment I was in, you know, it, it wasn't the nicest, but it was a roof over my head, praise God. But even then I was like visualizing, like, no, I visualized the home I, I do have, God. Like I imagine, I saw myself on red carpets. I saw myself doing this stuff, Michael. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm like? Oh my God. Like I saw it. Yeah. I like I and I just so the mo so something I wish that my younger self would have known. Oh my god, would have known <laughs> oh, that. Have I would, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like my makeup artist. Like, Girl, I'm just like, I got what you wrote my makeup. Um, but I wish I just would have really had got the revelation that I received a couple years ago, where it's like almost I was almost begging God, you know, and it's like that's not really faith. And it's like, Candace, you focus on the why, the how is his business. My pastor would always say that you remember your purpose, your intention for doing or going after what you're going after, the how, what role is it going to be? You know, that's his business. So once I shifted that, like, oh, wait, not every audition, because I was like, please, God, please let this be the one. Oh, this is the one. This is the one. It's like, Kenneth, you show up, you put forth your best work. And if it's God, if this is the where he's going to bless you, then that's his business, you know? So instead of me being like, oh God, please let this be the role. Let this be the one. I was like, oh no, I am a series regular already in the name of Jesus. The role or the show God is going to be up to you. So I thank you right now, Father God, that I already am this thing. But before the process, I, I didn't think of it that way, you know? So I'm just, I, I wish... I think a lot of my journey would have been a little bit easier for me had I just really understood that you have to see it before you see it. Right. It leaves already up here. Like, you know, yeah. Perfect. I hope that makes sense. No, that makes sense. It's great. Thank you so much. No, Candace, this has been wonderful. I know we're all out of time for today. And I just had a great time speaking with you. And I always hope the other person has as well, too. Yes, you see the smile. <laughs> a great time thank you so much for having me i'm so grateful thank you oh my pleasure